Grace Chapel, those who are in chapel with us, welcome. Good to have so many of you back. And those listening from afar, welcome. Do join us in communion if you can. And to those that are returning, I will administer the host. And uh, we will take, if you want the, uh, the uh, wine, you can... There's little individual containers that you can take. And uh, do join us for the sacraments. And let us pray. God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. As we give thanks for all that you have given us. Guide us, protect us, and help us to walk in safety during these difficult times. We ask all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our prayers today, let us remember the sick and the suffering and all people for whom our prayers are offered. We um, special prayers today for Scott DePue, who's in the hospital with COVID, for Bill Nix, who had a very serious surgery this week, for Bobby Malin, who was in an accident, I believe, in Florida, and was pretty badly broken up. And also for Michael Grover, a friend of Carolyn Ackler's. Um, I'll ask special prayers for Linda Long, who is going to have knee replacement surgery this week. And she should be running for the Summer Olympics, I would think. Uh, so hopefully they'll have her all tuned up. So she's been waiting a long time to get that. Uh, done and finally decided it's time and she's doing it so that's good 
We pray for the repose of the soul of Karen Jackson Byrne, who is Dave's cousin, who died this week out in Washington. So, are there other prayer intentions that we need to know about? Anything going on in the area? Soon things will be going on in the area, and I suspect when they start, we will have a variety of things to do. People have been patient long enough, I think. <clears throat> This week, when I got my, probably my 27th phone call to extend my car's warranty, and it was on a car I had like 15 years ago, I think, and they wanted me to extend my warranty. So that night as I was doing my prayers, I was thinking about Lent. And I'm sure God told me, Phil, it's time to extend your spiritual warranty. It's Lent. So let's extend your spiritual warranty. And I sort of thought, I wonder how long that lasts. And I'm sure God said to me, through eternity. And that's why we're in church is to extend our spiritual warranties. And so far, I don't think any of you have expired. <laughs> and don't, please, in church. We come to church as a sacred place. Many people have said when they come into chapel, it's like the rest of the world is out there and we're in here, safe in the bosom of God, safe in the hands of Jesus. Today's Gospel reading is, I believe, one of the only times in the Bible it shows where Jesus was provoked, that Jesus showed his human side that he showed he too was human, he too had a temper. But it also shows his devotion to the sacred place where he found God, to the temple that people were desecrating. Tipping over the tables of the money changers, conveying to us that the material things are not important, but spiritual things are so important. It's so good to see so many of you back in the chapel today. And you don't look any different. Just have your masks on, that's all. I'm sure that I only look about 15 to 20 pounds different. Because what do you do when you live alone? You eat. What do you do when you live with somebody in a pandemic? You eat. But well, we've done well during these difficult times. And we can, thank, we can thank media for that. That's been helpful. Television is not one of my favorite things. I've been painting all my walls and doors and, with pictures. And I've got to extend my warranty because I have so many doors. I have 36 doors in my house. So it gives me a chance while I'm painting to think about things and do prayers for the people that I love. I think that Lent is such a wonderful season because it tells, it tells us that it's time to look at ourselves. We know within our hearts where our weaknesses are 
and we know where our strengths are. And as we know our strengths, we can gain confidence. And that confidence can be affirmed through our faith. And it all comes about by learning to love ourselves. And I've always felt that Lent coming at the end of winter was a good time. You have nothing else to do but think of yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses, and what you want to do as soon as spring breaks, as soon as spring comes to us, as soon as the crocuses come through the ground. And it's a rebirth. It's a resurrection. Our spirit once again becomes alive. I was at the hardware store this morning and the cashier said that Wednesday it might be up to 65 to 70 degrees. And I says, oh, I can spend the whole day sitting out in my yard in my hot pink Speedo. <laughs> and he says, you live on a busy, busy intersection. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but we can begin to feel that the earth is changing. Once again, we see the birth of spring coming. So prepare ourselves during this Lenten season while we still are confined a bit by weather. Look at the people that are with you that you love. Look at the people that have gone before you that you love. And they're still around you. They still surround you with their love and your memories of them all the wonderful things you did together. Their bodies have gone away, but their spirit hasn't, because they too <clears throat> renewed their warranty as they went through life. I guess I told that story about the warranty because like Jesus in the temple, every time I get that phone call, I get a little angry. I don't need an extended warranty. Or 27 of them. But I know it's people just doing their jobs. So let us, in this Lenten season, feel the rebirth of the church. Let us, at the end of this Lenten season, during the Easter tide. Let us know there's hope for eternal life. Let us know that there is hope. I've waited for the day when you people start coming back. And that's part of the rebirth, not only for spring, but the ending of the pandemic. People are, more people I know are getting their inoculations than people that have not. And it creates a sense of security for us. And the numbers are declining, so it's working. So continue to pray for yourself during the Lenten season. There's nothing arrogant about that, nothing selfish about that. Pray for yourself. Ask God to walk with you. Look within your heart and find the God that dwells there. It is a God of pure love, unconditional love, a God that will never forsake you. And in the Gospel today we're reminded not only are we spiritual beings, but we're human beings. And there will be days that we will have bad hair days. Well, except Gary. Um, he won't have a bad hair day. <laughs> so let us go forth in peace.
to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died on his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our offering basket is out in the narthex of the church, so you can leave your offering there on the way out. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our offertory hymn is number 288, in verses 1 and 2. Pray for all people who cannot be with us 
especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Middon, Donna Lesh, Beth O'Donnell, Joe Brennan, Steve Frazier, Ann Price, Gail Yosmoika, Nancy Zamoyski, Amy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, Katie Ahart, Katie Smith, Larry Kadeke, Jackie Kadeke, George Bowen, Jerry Gentilly, Cynthia Halston, Cindy Burdick, Harry Collins, Joseph Robert Cass, Ward Hungerford, Jack Carr, Richard Vinskoy, Gloria Kunzman, Bob Wilcox, Mary Burkle, Greg Lori Wode, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Sue Rice, Betty Pierce, Gavin Padakey, Letha Shaler, Mike Scorsese, Monica Padgett, Tom Smith, Pamela Whitehill, Emma Burkle, Bonnie Cummings, John Irving, Penny Wilson, Jeff Ackler, Marty Deutsch, Patty Van Gorder, Butch Stamer, Arlene Birch Coleman, Virginia Johnson, Jeff Jeffords, Lou Liguri, Joanne Conrad, Judy Kozel, Bernie Morris, Linda Long, Russell Diller Jr., Michael Grover, Bobby Mallon, Bill Mix, Scott DePue. We trust with faith that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for your servant Karen Jackson Byrne. We trust your faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received her into your heavenly kingdom. Be with her family and friends as they mourn their loss that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together, let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us nod peace to each other and in your homes embrace each other with peace and love.
trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us all to pray.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with the spiritual food of the blessed body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For well, God, walk with us in the days ahead. Keep us ever mindful of your love for us. Help us to discover your spirit that dwells in us, the spirit of pure love. Help us to forgive and to forget the things that need to be forgotten. Help us to remember the cherished memories. Help our spirit to add to your creation and not detract from your creation. We pray for our servicemen and women, harbor them in safety until they return to their homes. Be with our country and our world that we may come together in peace and love. We pray that during this pandemic that it will continue to decline so that we can once again enjoy the company of each other in gatherings. We pray for Linda Long and Martha Brewster who will be going through surgery this week and next. We trust your faith that you have given the doctors the skills and knowledge that they need. Give your patients patience in their afflictions. Help them to overcome their adversity. We ask all this for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is number 151. We will do verses 1, 4, and 5.